Today we'll start with the second question first and the question says in which one of the following page replacement algorithms it is possible for the page fault rate to increase even when the number of allocated frames increases and we are given four options that are names of replacement algorithms page replacement algorithms so if you are familiar with the concept of Belady's anomaly or stack algorithms this question is very easy and it is very easy to grab marks here because it is a clear cut answer or option D is a clear cut answer in this case. First in first out page replacement algorithm is the one of the algorithms that suffers from Belady's anomaly and what is Belady's anomaly? This phenomena that even if we increase the available frames then also it may happen that the page fault rate may increase instead of decreasing which is actually expected so algorithms like first in first out or fifo algorithms are not stack algorithms what is a stack algorithm i have explained you in previous lecture of operating system in this preparation series only we uh, solved a proper complete question on what is a stack algorithm and uh, how is it different from a non-stack algorithm and what causes Belady's anomaly. So you can refer there for complete explanation. But here I'll only tell you that the two reasons or uh, why FIFO is suffering from such a phenomena is the cause is Belady's anomaly that is present, that is written to you, that is specified to you in the question and the cause is that FIFO is not a stack algorithm. That is the reason of this phenomena. This is some extra information that you must know because sometimes the question is twisted and you need to know the reason behind certain phenomena to answer the question and so it may be helpful to you in other questions but the answer to this question is first in first out algorithm now coming back to our first question the question states that consider an arbitrary set of cpu bound processes with unequal cpu burst lengths submitted at the same time to a computer system which one of the following process scheduling algorithm would minimize the average waiting time in the ready queue okay so the options are shortest remaining time first which is srtf algorithm round robin algorithm rr with time quantum less than the shortest cpu burst uniform random algorithm and highest priority first with priority proportional to the CPU burst length. Okay, so whenever we talk in terms of scheduling algorithms or CPU scheduling algorithms, the best algorithm is shortest job first algorithm. And why it is the best? Because shortest job first or SJF gives you the minimum average waiting time okay so any algorithm that is giving you the minimum average waiting time is the best algorithm for cpu scheduling but here shortest job first is not mentioned but if you carefully notice that you are provided with the option of shortest remaining time first and shortest remaining time first that is srtf is the preemptive version of shortest job first so what is the best option here to choose the shortest remaining time first algorithms because it would give you a minimum average waiting time now you would think that there are certain disadvantages to shortest remaining time first it can cause starvation but you have to be careful that here in the question it is mentioned that all the processes arrive at the same time or all the processes are submitted at the same time to the computer. What it means that 
when shortest remaining time first algorithm is chosen and all the processes are present at the same time or at time zero all the processes have arrived then this algorithm would behave as shortest job first because shortest remaining time first has a disadvantage of starvation but this disadvantage only occurs when the arrival times of different processes is different or when shorter processes keep arriving after the arrival of longer process but since here all the processes arrive at the same time therefore SRTF or shortest remaining time first algorithm becomes shortest job first because the process with the shortest burst time will be the one with the shortest remaining time okay you have to be uh, very thorough with your concepts of such algorithms then only you'll be able to quickly notice that why shortest remaining time first will behave like shortest job first here because shortest remaining time first if it has all the processes with it at arrival at time zero then the remaining time would be the burst time of all these processes so srtf would act like shortest job first and this would be the best algorithm to choose in such cases now sometimes you uh, think that since highest priority first with priority proportional to cpu burst length is also given as an option then why should i reject this option and why should i choose shortest remaining time option remaining time first option so in such cases if you are confused between any two choices you can take a very simple example and uh, find out that in that particular example which choice would be the best so if i take an example of three processes say p1 which has a burst time of 10 p2 burst time of 20 and p3 with a burst time of 30 so first you have to understand what does this statement mean highest priority first with priority proportional to the cpu burst length that means out of these three the process with the highest burst length would have the maximum priority then this process and then this process so in terms of priority p3 has the highest priority and p1 has the lowest priority okay now if we choose option D in what order they would be executed in the order of their priority that is P3 then P2 and then P1 but if we choose shortest remaining time first how would they be executed since all of them are present at time 0 the remaining time of P1 is 10 remaining time of P2 is 20 and the remaining time of P3 is 30 so the shortest out of them is P1 then P2 and then p3 so this would result in a lower average waiting time as compared to this case so you can safely choose option a here so that question goes like a multi-threaded program p executes with x number of threads and uses y number of locks for ensuring mutual exclusion while operating on shared memory locations all locks in the program are non-re-entrant that is if a thread holds a lock L then it cannot re-acquire lock L without releasing it. If a thread is unable to acquire a lock it blocks until the lock becomes available. The minimum value of X and the minimum value of Y together for which execution of P can result in a deadlock are and the options are given to you. In this question, it is a very easy question though it looks lengthy but you just need to understand what is a re-entrant lock. As it is stated here also, a re-entrant lock is a lock that does not allow a process or a thread to reacquire the lock. Alright, a entrant lock or a re-entrant lock, sorry, a non-re-entrant lock is a lock that does not acquire allow the thread or the process to reacquire the same lock again when it is already acquired and a re-entrant lock 
does the real opposite of it and it allows a thread to reacquire the same lock even when the thread already owns the lock. So since it is a non-re-entrant lock, if we consider a single thread with a single resource and the thread is holding the resource but the thread again wants to acquire the same lock that it already owns. In that situation, the thread would be deadlocked because it is a non-re-entrant lock. So a non-re-entrant lock, you, I'll just write out the little definition so that it becomes clear. Firstly, you need to know a re-entrant lock. A re-entrant lock allows a thread, re-entrant, allowing the re-entry. It allows a thread or a process to reacquire the lock that is the same process or the thread can acquire the same lock that it is already holding this is required in certain functions that are implemented in operating systems which it is already holding so a thread is holding a particular lock say l and it again wants to acquire that lock so this is possible in case of re-entrant locks. There won't be a problem and the thread would not be deadlocked. But in case of non-re-entrant locks, this would be a problem. It would lead to a single thread blocking itself. So in this question, the minimum number of thread and the minimum number of resources that are required would be one itself. All right. So as you can say, as you can see, without a uh, lock can be acquired again without blocking the thread. This prevents the deadlocking of the thread as well. Of the thread. So the minimum resources that are required is one that is a single lock that would be acquired and the minimum number of thread that is required is also one so a single thread can deadlock itself for a single resource when it tries to reacquire the same lock that it has already acquired and the lock type is non reentrant so the answer would be x that is the number of threads 1 and y the number of threads equal to 1. This is the minimum number that is required. So that's all for today's lecture. I hope you get the concept of re-entrant and non-re-entrant locks. In this question it was mentioned that the lock that is provided to the thread is non-re-entrant so a thread cannot reacquire the lock that it already owns so the minimum number of threads and resources required would be one in each case to perf to enable the deadlock situation so stay tuned to easy engineering classes for more lectures on gate computer science and other previous year related questions of other subjects thank you for watching the video like the video and share it with your friends if you understood the question and tell us in the comments how did you like it